Hey guys, Peter Steele here, back with another video, and we are taking another look at the Dev Diaries. Bad news here, this is going to be the last one until August. The Hoi4 Dev team is taking a break for the summer, but they are leaving us with something interesting at the very least. So, let's get right on it. First up, they are clarifying supply flow. Now, I know, I know, it sounds awfully boring, but supply is what makes your armies march. It is what makes your empires run. Moving forward, this is what the supply map is going to look like. And um, it's a lot easier to see how supply works in this case than it is with the current supply map mode. So there is that. Now the light yellow or the bright spots are where you have good connections to your supply hubs. So supply hubs are connected via railways. There's good overlap between supply hubs and everything flows smoothly from the capital to where it needs to go. Then it gets darker as that efficiency goes down until we get to the purple splotches. These purple splotches mean there is a very bad connection to the capital, but they are still able to draw on local supply from victory points and supply hubs. So you're not totally lost. And then we get to the bright red spots here and, and some of these uh, more yellowish ones on the edges here of Romania, as you can see, that means there is no supply. We're taking massive attritions. Please stop this offensive. You are overextending. I mean, it's a lot more obvious now where your supply issues are coming from than it is in the current game because Lord knows how to fix supply issues. You have to push into territory to capture the victory points so you can get some supply, so you can build territory, so you can build some infrastructure there. But to push there, you have to fight there. You can't fight there because you don't have any supply. So. I look forward to this change. If nothing else, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Now, the way supply works moving forward will be everything still starts at the capital and from the capital via railway, it will go to various hubs placed around the country. As the distance between those hubs increases, your efficiency goes down and there is some supply lost along the way, which is not a big issue. If you look at Western Europe, it's very bright yellow because there are many supply hubs there. There's good infrastructure there. So there's not a lot of loss along the way. Now, if you move further to the east, you can see the effects of that. There is more distance between major hubs. There's more need for railways to be built. And as you push further and further, you're capturing territory, meaning those railways need to be repaired. They need to be converted into something your armies or your engineers can use. And there will be a time delay between capturing a supply hub and its railway network and between being able to use that effectively. As you can see here with Romania, they've pushed heavily, heavily into the, um, what is this, the Caucasus. But because everything is red, we can see already that they are overextending. Red means they're getting no supply, which means they're also cut off from their local supply hubs, which means nothing is actually happening there. You're just going to take massive attrition. And the only way around that is to improve the railways, improve the supply hubs, and just wait until your engineers have done their work and the railway gauges are converted and the supply hubs are functional once more. Now, how much supply each area can um, provide is going to depend on the level of the supply hub covering that area. It's also going to depend on the railway network leading back to previous supply hubs and all the way back to the capital. It's also going to depend on just how strong your economy is. The strength of your economy, so the amount of factories I would assume, determines how much total supply you can push from the capital out into the network. And if you're a very small player like Luxembourg, you will not simply not be able to provide enough supply for an army the size of that of the Soviet Union, for instance. So they will be handicapping smaller countries in this way. You will not just be able to churn out masses of cheap units. Then again, if you're that small, you're probably not going to have the manpower to anyway. Moving on, we have a little bit of an illustration of how that railway network works. If you look at Minsk on the left there, you can see that it is functional. It has 25 out of 30, I would assume, troops drawing supply from it. I'm not exactly sure what that number means. Maybe I've missed it. If you know, hit me up in the comments. And then we have this railway leading from Minsk to the two other supply depots in the east. Yes, east. You can see a number and a clock on there. That means it is currently being converted for use. It's not currently operational. And as a result of that, the other supply hubs that the German army seems to have captured there are crossed out. The red cross marks on those supply hubs means they are not connected to the capital. They cannot draw supply from your big old pile in Berlin and you need to fix that. That is currently being fixed by the engineers 
and it, it just takes time. It's an automatic process currently that just takes time. This is going to significantly slow down advances if you don't plan ahead. Can't just set a front line and go if you are not fixing your supply issues along the way, which I do like. Moving on, the concept of motorization in supply. They've changed that from the first dev diary. Now, by default, a supply hub will not need a certain amount of motorized because it was just very difficult to micromanage. No, instead you will be able to turn that option on manually as you choose to. However, be aware, it's going to require a lot of trucks and they are all going to come out of your stockpile. So be prepared to produce some motorized equipment. And to turn that off, currently you would just have to click the horse icon there. Now the other icons are pretty much as you expect from most of these uh, Hoi4 icons. You prioritize supply flowing to this hub by clicking the chevrons. You can click the railway icon with a plus there to automatically build more railways as the supply hub needs it. You can manually build more railways by clicking the plus icon I believe. No actually I'm wrong. If you click the railways with the plus icon you can go into the building menu to upgrade your railways. If you click the big red plus sorry the big green plus you will automatically start queuing up um, railways as you need them. The supply hub will decide what it needs. The blue flag the blue flag is very interesting. Let's scroll down a bit. This is a Lifesaver, this is going to be so good. It allows allied control to the node or disallows allied control from the node. This is a great way to flag the AI that you don't want them on your front and stop joining these tight landings. So this might finally fix the issue of the AI flooding a billion troops into a front line that they cannot support and just sucking up all the supply and grinding things to a halt. Oh God, I want that. And then finally, the star icon there is also very interesting. It allows you to move your supply capital to a new location if you have sufficient surrender progress. No word on how much surrender progress you'd need, but it would allow you to get around issues where your capital ends up being cut off or surrounded. So as a trade-off, of course, not everything is going to run smoothly the moment you move your entire supply network, but it is a good way of keeping you from being, well, ruined. If you somehow find your capital to be on some island, that is currently being convoy raided into oblivion. This is a very interesting way around that. Also to keep from being encircle memed in multiplayer, I suppose. And then we come to the biggest, biggest announcement. I think you've already seen this coming, but we are getting mulberry harbors. Floating harbors that can be built ahead of time to support naval invasions in areas where there is no port in sight. They're expensive, they're big, and oh boy, are they beautiful. Now, numbers are not finalized yet, so don't, don't stare too much at this, but uh, they do look quite nice on the map. Nice to the icon next to the province where your troops are. Now, these are not permanent harbors. What they do is create a localized immediate supply hub that will give the troops that have landed or are landing still the needed supply to survive and make some offensives. Now the amount of supply is going to be dependent on how many troops are there. How is the air power? Is the enemy bombing you into oblivion? Are you doing heavy fighting? That sort of stuff. So the first thing you want to do after landing is still push for a port, but this gives you a lot more options. You will no longer simply be encircled and destroyed because you could not capture a port in the instant your naval landings went off. This is a very good addition and allows for some strategic planning. I've also read that these will be considered very expensive. So you don't want to throw these out for every little naval landing you want to do. These will probably best be reserved for massive naval operations such as your D-Days or your Gallipolis. Well, could have used these at Gallipoli. And with that, we can conclude this dev diary. They've also shared this very lovely painting of Polish Cossacks attacking German infantry. Very nice. So uh, the Poles did not charge the tanks. They just attacked the infantry unaware. So they did nicely, apparently. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Just hit me up in the comments, tell me what I did wrong or if I made any mistakes. I'm always looking to learn. Nobody's perfect. Uh, if you want to support what I do and help support the channel, check out the membership page. All you have to do is click the join button next to the subscribe button and it will take you to the YouTube membership page. It has all the information you need. That's it for me. Have a good one. See ya.